you serious? No hesitation on the shot. Ms. Rye is feeling it. Make wow. it three for three. And see you, Lino. See you later. Here's a chance for Sias, and there's a shot and a goal. Will Spare will take it all the way. Touchdown, Seahawks. The extra look and the goal. A gorgeous goal by him. From Hofstra University's David Mack Sports Complex, it is the Long Island Catholic Girls Basketball Championship, and it's live on Varsity Media, presented by Bethpage Federal Savings Bank. Dylan Butler, Kate Gordon here with you tonight on the Varsity Media Sports Network as the third-seeded Spartans of Sacred Heart, who come in with an 11-5 and record, take on top-seeded St. Mary's, the Gales, are 18 and 3. Thanks for joining us, everyone. Again, Dylan Butler, Kate Gordon, and Kate, uh, certainly a contrast in styles here between uh, these two teams. Sacred Heart coming off a 54 to 46 win, an upset win over Our Lady of Mercy Academy in their semifinal game. Uh, they are looking to be patient. They, they want to uh, not look to push the tempo, and that is obviously very much what St. Mary's want to do. They had a 10-point win over St. Anthony's team, Kate, who did try to slow things down and did it pretty successfully in their semifinal game. Absolutely. I mean, what happens with um, St. Mary's is if you don't protect the backcourt, they're just going to go layup, 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 rebound, layup. That's how they run things. So once you get there, you know, if you could protect the backcourt and make them have to defend and not get out easy baskets. You can stay in the game with them, and that's what Anthony's did, and why they had a great game plan. Be interested to see how Sacred Heart um, implements a game plan similar to that, as um, based on you know their personnel. They certainly, as we'll detail throughout this game, they've got the shooters to stay in a game like this as well, and it's multiple players as well. But the player that will it will show you right now as our impact player is a sophomore for them, Annie Kiernan a six-foot sophomore, and um, you want to have these long-ranging three-point shots. That's what Andy Kiernan kind of brings, those high-arcing shots that we saw in the earlier game, but she can knock it down, and uh, when she's shooting the way that she can, again, a huge threat. She went six of six from the foul line against Our Lady of Mercy Academy, that in overtime, and we know how hard she plays as well, and what a big impact player she'll be here for the Spartans tonight. Absolutely, and to say six for six from a sophomore, I'm getting tired of hearing all of these young <laughs> kids still in the league. But um, she, you know, she's she's a she's a stretch four. She'll stretch you out. She'll post you up. So you have to guard her with someone maybe a little um, bigger that might not be able to stay with her. She's you know again another uh, five tool player can do all the little things, but knocks down a lot of jump shots for them. And when things are on the on the line, they look for um, Keenan to step up big time. And for the Gales, their impact player. There are two Barbos on the St. Mary's team, but we're going to take a look at Taryn Barbo, a, a 5'10 junior. Kevin White, the head coach, said she's probably got about a dozen Division I offers from the A-10 and down, MAC, NEC. Had a couple of 40-point games this year, 40 and 43. Had 22 in their semifinal win. She is unbelievable from the high post going downhill she rebounds she's a great passer she really does all the little things on top of being a, a huge offensive presence can do everything from the uh, high post and she'll knock down the jumper as well we'll take a quick break for the anthem we'll bring the starting lineups for you when we return you're watching this long island girls basketball championship presented by beth page federal savings bank Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for, and our attention to detail on your highlights 
will separate your resume from others. Stand out from the crowd. We'll help showcase your talents. Contact Varsity Media today and order a college recruiting video. Welcome back to the David Mack Sports Complex on the campus of Hofstra University for the Long Island Catholic Girls Basketball Championship. Dylan Butler here with the St. John the Baptist head coach, Kate Gordon, and we'll take a look at our starters for tonight's game. First for the Spartans of Sacred Heart. As they're being introduced to the crowd there, it's Kim Hopkins. Colleen McGovern, Bridget Feek. There is our impact player, Annie Kieran. And Lauren Marquardt. Our starting lineups are presented by Catholic Health. Head coach for Sacred Heart is Bob Speck. He's a rookie in the varsity level. 22 years, though, on the JV level for Bob Speck. And Archbishop Malloy, graduate out of 19, from 1976. Let's take a look at the starters now for St. Mary's. And again, their starting lineup also presented by Catholic Health. There you see Alyssa Blaylock. She's been running the point with Taylor Barbeau injured. And we'll see if maybe Taylor Barbeau plays a little bit here today. There's Taryn Barbeau, Tara Murray, Kayla Williams, and Allison Ntumbwe as well inside. The six-foot freshman for head coach Kevin White in his eighth season out of Holy Cross 1975. So you've got Archbishop Malloy 1976, Holy Cross 1975, two uh, guys who waged war in the Catholic League back in the day, waging war here as head coaches in this one. Should be uh, certainly a fun one. And again, it's, it's, it's going to be about whose style, right, wins this one or, or whose style leads out here. St. Mary's, you see them there. The Gales want to get up. They want to run. They want to press. Can Sacred Heart handle that pressure and slow the game down and also keep St. Mary's off the glass as well? So you've got to, you've got to make your baskets as well and maybe try to hold St. Mary's to one. Yes, that's always a huge undertaking with St. Mary's. They collectively rebound offensively very well. And like you said, handling the pressure. That is the key to Sacred Heart's success today. They can handle the press. They can stay in the game, make big shots. They all can shoot the basketball from three. And that is a great asset to have when you're against a very physical, strong uh, St. Mary's team. And there's an early positive sign for the Spartans. They win the opening tip. And there's Hopkins. Hands off again. This is a Spartans team. They can all shoot the ball as it deflected out. The high and wide zone is going to um, really bother Sacred Heart if they don't get someone at that high post. They are very aggressive in their zone, St. Mary's. Spinning was Thiek into the lane. Bounces it back out to Marquardt. Loses it, though, to Blaylock. And this is where St. Mary's is so dangerous. Although some miscommunication. The loose ball picked up by Hopkins, and she gets the layup. Great hustle play by Hopkins. The know-how to just go after the basketball. That's a good sign early for Saint, uh, Sacred Heart. So the first basket of the game goes to the Spartans. Three-point attempt, Blaylock off the mark. Crashing the boards and crashing into the Saint for the Sacred Heart bench as well was Taryn Barbeau. Helping hand there by <laughs> Bob Speck as well. It's great hustle. Hey. And you're going to see that hey. all game you, long you, from Barbeau. You. She just never stops all day, all the afternoon. She's going to be fighting for the ball. Give it to him, Lauren. Mark Wart. Aggressive defense there by Taryn Barbeau, who was harassing Colleen McGovern, who will inbound underneath. McGovern, nice pass inside, and two more for Kim Hopkins. Hopkins is one of those kids, first in the gym, last to leave. She loves to work hard, 
um, on her game, and she's going to give you everything she's got every time she's on the floor. I love the note, too, by Bob Speck. We'll get to that in a moment. Great job defensively there by Sacred Heart as well. Out to the shooter, no good. Inside, and the foul. Kayla Williams gets the bucket and the harm. What a great offensive rebound put back. Unbelievable. Kiernan hits her on the arm, and now she's getting a shoot two. Williams, the 5'11 junior, makes the free throw. Probably the best interior scorer for the Gales. Big, strong kid. We see how she can rebound. Powerful. Kevin White says does all the dirty work for his team. Inside, out go the Spartans. Aggressive hands by Blaylock. And a steal. Got to shorten the game. You can't make long passes against St. Mary's. They'll make you pay every single time. Keep the game short and concise in order to make, have success on the offensive side of the ball. Gale switch it. Blaylock up top. Three-point attempt. Rims out. That was Tara Murray. A lights-out shooter. That she is. She brings a lot to help when she knocks down that jumper because it opens up the dribble drive for Blaylock and Barbo. Great movement there by Sacred Heart. Three ball off the mark. Offensive rebound, though. Those are going to be huge for Sacred Heart. That three, no good. How about another offensive rebound as well? When you miss the threes, they're long rebounds, and the Spartans have gotten them so far. Again, we go inside out. That three off the mark. But yeah. here's a chance to run for St. Mary's. Blaylock ahead of the field. Misses her bunny. Put back attempt also off the mark by Taryn Barbeau. But the ball will stay with St. Mary's. Right now, Sacred Heart has to realize that they want that St. Mary's wants to run. Blaylock ekes out. They have to protect the backcourt. Off the inbound, back out to Blaylock. You don't want to give St. Mary's more than one opportunity to put the ball at the rim because they'll make you pay. Back out to Murray. Murray to Blaylock. Penetrates the middle of the lane. Scoop layup attempt, no good. Battle for the ball down low. Rebound also off the mark. Shot clock is down to three as Sacred Heart gains possession. Blaylock loves that left dribble back to the right, hard downhill move to the brim with her right hand. They have to keep her in front of them. Here's that press that we mentioned before, and it results in a turnover forced by Blaylock, the 5'6'' senior. Kate, I know, as the St. John the Baptist coach, I like to hear the word senior by these yes. opponents. Not many have been named <laughs> senior today. I have to rethink this entire attack. But Blaylock has got some mid-major looks. Went down to Longwood. Three-point attempt by Murray. No good. Offensive rebound by Barbeau. And she can't get it to fall. And there's Hopkins. Gets it right back. Harassed. Good help. Three-point shot. Kiernan. No good. And it's Blaylock with the rebound. Definitely can see a little bit of nerves with this young Sacred Heart. Um, team with not a lot of experience on the big stage. Um, hopefully they'll settle in here and handle the pressure. Barbo gets to the basket. You see the 2-2-1 two -two for Kevin White scales. Ooh, nearly a traveling violation to the corner. That three off the mark. And Blaylock is just getting to every loose ball. She pulls back out. Swings it. And a foul is called on that inside pass. You can see that Sacred Heart is really taking away that high post to keep Barbo from getting the ball. But the rest, they have to rebound collectively as a team right now. Otherwise, they're going to struggle. Blaylock, who gets the ball now, you can see her left leg wrapped up a bit. She suffered that hamstring injury in the semifinal. And even Kevin White, when we spoke with him on Monday night, said she was at crypto therapy just trying to work on that a little bit. Obviously, she's a baller. She's staying in. And there's a nice bucket by Taryn Barbeau. That's four for her. 
Yeah, nice little baseline drive with the pull up. Very effective. 7-4 early on, and those are the turnovers you can't afford to have if you are Sacred Heart. Haley Elwood is a really good point guard for only being a sophomore. I think she can settle in here and really help them handle the pressure. She does a nice job with the basketball. She, she's smart. I think she's going to settle in here and help Sacred Heart with this pressure. Kate Bandowski checks in the Quinnipiac lacrosse commit. She'll come out and defend up top. Barbeau spins from her defender. Good help defense there. They feed the post. Spartans double down there. Ball's loose on the baseline and will go the other way. Sacred Heart ball. That was a nice job collapsing down on the post. Now they just have to handle the pressure. There's Lauren Marquardt. Hands off and another costly turnover for Sacred Heart. Sacred Heart's playing good defense, so that's helping them right now with all of these turnovers. And that's kind of what the press generally does against you as Blaylock's three is no good. It forces you to, to play faster than you want because you want to get out of that pressure, right, right away. Yes, and it feels like 10 seconds is two seconds in the backcourt when the pressure is so intense. Barbeau, the steal, and the layup. She's got six. And Bob Speck, the Sacred Heart coach, calls a timeout. It's a 30. Look at the speed, though, on the turnover as Barbeau gets to the basket. She covers so much ground defensively and creates so many easy opportunities for herself because of her athleticism and her ability to get her hands on so many passes. You see Kevin White there in the middle of the huddle, the head coach of St. Mary's, known Kevin a long time, his daughters as well. And uh, one thing Kevin said, you know, he always goes back and references New York City basketball, but he said uh, of Barbeau, he said, look, uh, you know, if, if the great Tom Konchowski was, was still alive, he would say that Taryn Barbeau is a Swiss Army knife because she does everything on the court. She can score, she can rebound. Um, she shoots the ball. She's probably the best interior defender as well for the Gales. Another big reason why, again, a dozen Division One offers from A-10 down, and, and she's still a junior. Yes, her and I have a love-hate relationship to <laughs> joke around. She came in off the bench cold against us right here at Hofstra to knock down a jumper to beat us in the championship game in 2020. I promise I wasn't going to mention that. There's a three... And that's good. What a big bucket by the sophomore, Haley Elwood. I have a lot of respect for uh, the Barbos. They're great kids, so I don't mind mentioning that. <laughs> Today, I'll let it slide. I promise you, if there was going to be a mention of that, it was coming from you. I was. <laughs> <laughs> As a foul was called inside. That one on Taryn Barbo. Looked like a loose ball, kind of a, a touch foul there. But again, they got to call it tight, especially against a pressing team. Now, if you could escape the pressure as there's a jump ball, there's shots to be had off Abs of this press. Absolutely. Easy buckets on the blocks. They have to capitalize. They did a nice job right there breaking the pressure. But you have to capitalize on the block. Shannon Mayer is really known for her defensive and offensive rebounding, so sometimes you lose a little bit underneath um, scoring-wise, but she's a great rebounder. Here's Blaylock. Plays catch with Barbo. She backs it up, looks at the shot clock, which is down to six. Speeds through the lane. Nowhere to go, though. Good defending, and oh, that's a tough foul to concede if you are a sacred heart because it came, Kate, with one second left in the shot clock. After a great block by Kiernan, just unfortunate. That's an unlucky foul right there. That foul on Mayer inside will send Williams to the line. First free throw is good. It seems like with all this pressure, the score would be very different than 10-7. Yeah. 
But Sacred Hearts just doing the little things, trying to keep their head above water right now and kind of get the, the nerves out and, and maybe be successful here. A couple extra uh, passes and jump shots against the zone. Second free throw, gets the friendly bounce here at Hofstra and a good first quarter for Williams. She's got five of her team's 11. Solid from the free throw line, which is what you want from a big who's gonna get a lot of uh, uh, bodies down low. And again, the 2-2-1, two, two, how do you attack it? Because they're doubling the ball and there's a steal at midcourt by Taylor Clayton. And Barbeau is fouled on her way to the basket. Looks like St. Mary's is inviting the sideline here. And look at this steal and hustle play. Barbeau goes. She looks at uh, Blaylock and then just gets to the rim with the left hand. She's going to shoot two. Barbeau has six. So that, those are your two scores right there. It's Barbeau and it's Williams. And make it seven. And again, our impact player for a reason. Second free throw is good. By the way, to, to your point about that bucket that she had against you, Kevin White joked the only reason she was in the game because another one of her players, his players, fouled out. Yes, that is exactly what happened. And we were like, all right, leave her. <laughs> Everyone else pick up. We're yelling, screaming. She goes down and just drills it. I mean, you know, you know it's going to, uh, going to be a good career when you have that kind of confidence as a freshman in a big stage. I mean, the gym was bumping. It was loud. It was great. And he said that's the big difference, too, between the Barbos inside opportunity no good is where Taryn just plays. She doesn't think about the moment. Taylor is more of that cerebral, always thinking about what's going on. But again, you get that right from a floor general. Absolutely. And, and I think that that actually helps them together because they both bring such poise and um, excitement to the game in different ways. Three-point shot is good. Kate Bandowski buries it. So much for lacrosse, I guess. Drills the three. <laughs> Ready to go, now she's defending. Layup attempt no good, three seconds. Can Bendowski get one more? Eyes up, half court shot will be short, but a good opening quarter. Really for these girls here, the third seeded Spartans, they have held St. Mary's down in a low scoring quarter to 13. 10. We'll take a quick break. You're watching this Long Island Catholic Girls Basketball Championship presented by Beth Page Federal Savings Bank on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Catholic Health. When we see our island, we see a region that lives, feels, and pulses with energy. But before it all, we see you. Because it's your lives that breathe life into this island. At Catholic Health, we're able to provide the highest quality, most innovative care for your body because our culture cherishes your humanity. Long live Long Island. Welcome back to Hofstra University. Dylan Butler and Kate Gordon with you. It's the Long Island Girls CHSAA Championship Game presented by Beth Page Federal Credit Union. Here at Hofstra, good opening eight minutes here. Entertaining, uh, aggressive, and, and really we've seen what both teams want to do in those opening eight minutes. Absolutely. Obviously, St. Mary's wants to press, 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 and get easy baskets and set their press up. What Sacred Heart has to do here is not allow the easy traps to come, and they can't allow them to set up their press. That comes down to playing good defense and do not foul. Make them earn every bucket on their own. And that's what you have to do. You gotta keep St. Mary's guards, Blaylock and Barbo, in front of you. Don't let them go downhill. Second quarter starts with St. Mary's having possession. There's Blaylock up top. Steps back, hands off to Clayton, drives, lefty layup, high off the glass, no good. And there's that one and out that Sacred Heart wants and collective rebounding. There was four red shirts under the basket that time grabbing a defensive rebound. 
Bendowski to Kiernan. Kiernan drives baseline and she is fouled. That was our first time that we've seen her get the ball in a, in a good spot uh, for Sacred Heart. And that's what they need. They need to get her going and go at the rim, get them into foul trouble because St. Mary's does not go very deep. Foul was on Entwombwe. The freshman Williams checks back in and two free throws for Kiernan. First back rim, no good. This is about settling in as a sophomore. She's going to be fine. She's just to make one here, get the jitters out, and go forward. Second free throw is good. Two-point pole game. And there's Clayton, the sophomore high arcing. That's out there to be had. It was saved by Blaylock out at midcourt. So quick, unbelievable hands, gets to the ball. Good pass by Barbeau, down low for Williams. Loose ball here by the table and crashing into said table was Barbeau. We've seen her now crash into the bench and the scorer's table. We're going to have to take out insurance on her. Use that That's yours. Kiernan for three. Back rim no good. Big offensive rebound by Marquardt. It's lost, though, on the baseline, and now the Gales look to come the other way. It's Barbeau. End to end. Misses the layup. Now the Spartans, will they look to push or slow it down? Good decision. Ooh, Hopkins had it deflected, though. She was trying to pump the brakes. Barbeau goes the other way. Runner in the lane. And an offensive foul called. The charge drew, drawn drew by Hopkins. I mean, you want this in your player, right? You make a mistake, you get down the floor, and you try to get the ball back, and that's exactly what Hopkins did. I don't know, necessarily think she was set 100%, but... You know, the hustle play was there. Bob Spack said this is an interesting game for, for Hopkins because she puts so much pressure on herself. You know, she wants so badly to play in the next level, whatever level that be. So Speck was hoping, as there's an up and under move for the layup. Go the other way. Oh, unlucky there. Hopkins misses it. But if Sacred Heart learned anything from that possession, bounce pass to the middle, get outside to number two, and run your break. Murray! What a pretty stroke that was. What a great shooter. She's a great footwork, gets to the right where she needs to be, knocks it down. You can see why, too. She's got a lot of D1 interest. The putback! by Hopkins. She has six, but to conclude that story on Hopkins is, you know, Speck was saying, I, I just hope that someone in the stands here or watching on varsity media is a college coach who sees the competitor that Hopkins is and how much she wants to play and win and, you know, give her that chance, whether it's D2, D3, whatever the level may be. Clayton. Hands off, and there is Blaylock at seven on the shot. Murray, tough one. It deflected on its way. Battle for the loose ball. It's won there by the Spartans. Great defensive stop there by Sacred Harp. They have to start valuing the basketball and the, on offense. They're turning it over way too much, and that's a credit to St. Mary's pressure defense. Nine on the shot clock. Driving in was Hopkins. Lost it. Five on the shot. They've got to get one off. Elwood, two on the shot. Off glass and in. So savvy. Great job. Like I said before, just a really solid player. I think she's going to be great in the next few years. Again, sophomore. Just does all the little things right. Very solid basketball player for Sacred Heart. She's got the confidence to play in the big moment. And this is as big as it comes in this league. How about that scoop layout by Williams? What a game 
she is having to this point. Great little drop step scoop shot by Williams. It's a 30 second timeout, so we'll stay right here. This is game two of three we have for you here from Hofstra. This is game three coming up here tonight. It is the boys championship game. Top two seeds, the second seeded Titans of Holy Trinity against the Flyers of Chaminade. Number one versus number two. Should be a lot of fun here tonight. Andrew Deloya, the Northport head coach, joins me for that one. Uh, should be a great battle there as well. And don't forget, a lot of lacrosse players on the hardwood here. We're going to have a great preview of the boys and girls seasons at 317 Main in Farmingdale. Join myself and Andrew Rappaport for uh, what should be a great show, great atmosphere as well. It'll be a live show, and with the restrictions opening up, it should be a lot of fun as, as well just to have everyone out, uh, a celebration of the Long Island lacrosse community as well. Off the timeout. Here comes Hopkins. Plays a little high-low, or he hands it off to Kiernan. She's doubled, still finds a way to the basket. Off the glass, no good, and Blaylock comes the other way. Hands off, three-point attempt, rimmed out. Murray, the rebound. She is 5'10". Interior pass to Barbeau, back out to Murray. Steps away from a defender again. That didn't miss by much. Inside, a jump ball was called as Barbeau was double-teamed. Again, we ha they have to, um, Sacred Heart has to do a better job rebounding the basketball. I mean, Murray is so deadly from the outside. If you give her more than one look in a possession, she's going to knock it down. There's Elwood. Ooh, that could have been a moving screen there. Elwood drives, no good. And it's Blaylock. Oh, and the oh, kickball was called. You love the effort by Elwood. Like and you know what? Even worse case, that just stops or slows down St. Mary's, right? Yes, definitely. And, you know, like we said before, you don't make the shot or it does, doesn't work out your way. She hustles and tries to get the ball back, which is, you know, what you can ask for in these athletes. Blaylock. She goes. Off rim, no good. Gets the offensive rebound, though. Hands up to Murray. She's got unlimited range. Blaylock. Behind her back. Switches. Takes the three. No good. Long rebound. Ripped down, and a foul was called. It first went into Hopkins' hands, and then it went to Marquardt, and a foul was called by Clayton. She'll come out and, and Tumbe back in. Sacred Art has to find some offense here. Has to have somebody um, step up here and, and do something. We may get to the free throw line or knock down a jumper. They're just a little stale. And the length of Sacred St. Mary's, there it is. St. Mary's is bothering them, and that was a big shot. They heard you because it was Kiernan dialing up from beyond the arc. 22-18 is the score. Big, big bucket for the Spartans. Huge, because now their confidence is up. They didn't have to play defense again and not have any offense going. So that's a huge pull for Saint, uh, Sacred Heart. They're the underdogs here, so everything they do positive has got to be celebrated by each and every one of them. Foul line jumper off the mark, and Hopkins gets the rebound. Stolen inside, though, by Williams. Down the court come the Gales. Blaylock draws the contact. This time, she'll get the blocking foul called. It's great hustle. She just couldn't get there before Blaylock got there, but Hopkins didn't give up. She tries to get to the spot, but Blaylock gets to the rim and block. Clear block on uh, Hopkins. A great hustle. And you can see the warrior that Blaylock is, right? Because she's struggling right now. You, you could tell that that left hamstring it not quite, certainly not 100%, and I'm not sure the number is, but 
uh, she's out there battling. Well, if it was 100%, I don't even think Hopkins would have gotten there. I think she already would have been through the basket <laughs> for two because that's her speed. I mean, that's her strength. She plays with that, that speed and quickness. So, you know, you can definitely see her laboring that left leg. Second free throw also off the mark. A big rebound, and it's grabbed by Entumbe. And foul on Elwood. Minute 12 left in this first quarter. That's a big offensive rebound for St. Mary's there because now you're going down the floor uh, off of a foul shot and you get, you get two misses and now they have another possession. Sacred Heart's got to do a better job there. Murray hands off final minute and it's Blaylock losing it on that far side. And this is also part of the thing, right? I mean, you, you take Blaylock probably at 60%. One, because of just how good she is, but also, as you mentioned, it, it's a short bench for St. Mary's. So the options there, especially with Taylor Barbo out, are limited at that spot. Absolutely. So you need, you need her on the floor right now. It's a nice little back cut here, little off the ball action, little back screen. And now you get the free throw line opportunity to pull this to a two-point game. Fantastic, great job by Sacred Heart there to execute their offense. It's Colleen McGovern there looking for her first points of the game, knocks down the first. McGovern, probably in the Spartans' last five, six games, has been one of their better players. She's consistently been scoring in double figures. She goes one of two from the line. Yeah, she's been shooting great of late um, the last few games. She's really knocked down a lot of jump shots. Uh, she's in the mix. She's playing good defense. So McGovern's definitely given uh, Sacred Heart a great push these last few games. Williams flash at the foul line, goes to Murray. She drives baseline, turns there. Back out to Williams. Seven on the shot. Murray for three. Off the mark, no good. Rebound, Sacred Heart, and the Spartans can hold for the last. Kiernan goes baseline, and she's fouled. I mean, she got lucky there. She ran out of real estate and got bumped out of bounds. Um, so now they get another possession here to try to tie it, you know, to try to bring it within one, get to the free throw line before halftime, be big for them here. So here comes Kiernan, who scored all four of her points in this second quarter. Again, six of six from the foul line. She misses that one, and that overtime win over Our Lady Mercy Academy had 15 in that game. It was a co-high score with Colleen McGovern. Bridget Feek had 14 second-half points in that win as well. 0 for two now for the line, and here comes Mary's looking to beat the shot or beat the game clock. And to end goes Blaylock, the hoop and the harm. That's a killer right there. Downhill, 100 miles an hour. Gets to the rim, beautiful layup, and one. What a difference going into halftime now. Yeah, talk about a four or five point swing. Free throw is good, so it was Sacred Heart looking to maybe get that last shot. Instead, Blaylock goes down, and they'll just hold it here as it's a 25-19 lead for St. Mary's. Pretty entertaining first half for both teams. Very entertaining. I felt that there was a lot of positives that came out of um, Sacred Heart once they figured out how to break the press. We've got Kevin White here at halftime. Have a little conversation with the St. Mary's head coach. Get his headset going. Thank you. Kevin White, thanks for joining us here at halftime. Uh, low scoring first half, and you can see the contrast in styles where you want to push it. Uh, Sacred Heart wants to slow it down. What do you think of the first half? Um, exactly what you said, Dylan, but we have to do a better job defensively of matching up with people. Uh, we've given them a couple of open looks. I think they made three or four threes, and we weren't, well, I told them in, uh, before the game, you got to make put the ball on the floor. So if we're going to stand there and let them shoot jump shots, it's going to be a long night. And then 
Uh, defensive rebound, we got to do a better job on the defensive boards. They have too many offensive rebounds. Look like a big, maybe five point swing there late with, with you know, they have the ball and uh, they don't score, and Alyssa goes end to end. You, you can see she's not 100%, but she's a warrior out there, huh? Oh, she plays hard, but we also we have to take care of the ball and stop turning over too much. She's trying to do too much, and it's going to tell her she's got to be patient and let the game come to her. She's trying to force stuff that's not there yet. You might have just answered it, but but what do you want to see from your girls in the second half? I want them to still play hard. I want them to run something on offense. We really haven't done a good job. He's playing the matchup zone. We're not doing a good job of recognizing where the openings are. You know, and uh, he's doing a good job of keying on Taryn Barbo, and the other ones just got to step up and do something. All right, Kevin White, we wish you the best of luck in the second half as well. Thank you very much. That's the head coach of St. Mary's, Kevin White. We'll take a quick break, and we'll have uh, Chris Harda, the chairperson of the Boys and Girls uh, Basketball here in the Catholic League. When we return, you're watching this Long Island Girls Basketball Championship presented by Beth Page Federal Credit Union on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for, and our attention to detail on your highlights will separate your resume from others. Stand out from the crowd will help showcase your talents. Contact Varsity Media today and order a college recruiting video. Welcome back to Hofstra University, where at halftime, St. Mary's with a 25-19 lead in the Long Island Girls Catholic Basketball Championship, presented by Beth Page Federal Credit Union. And we are pleased to be joined here at halftime by Chris Hardit. We know him for wearing many hats, uh, but the hat that he has on here is as the chairperson uh, of basketball for both the boys and the girls here in the Long Island Catholic League. And uh, Chris, thank you for uh, joining us here at halftime. And uh, first thing here is, uh, you know, we're, we're at Hofstra. The crowd is here. It's a great atmosphere. It'll be a great one as well for the for the boys' game tonight. Uh, return to normalcy is kind of a, a phrase we've heard a lot, right, during during this COVID time. But how great is it to to have this uh, this normalcy back here inside of Hofstra University? You know, it was great last year that we were able to give the kids a season and. Um, but, you know, the whole idea of uh, not having uh, fans being allowed in the gyms and, and we couldn't have an, a, a game like this or a night like tonight. And uh, it's so great to see everybody back here. And I think it's awesome for the kids, um, like you said, to have a, a, a sense of normalcy here. And this is what our league is all about. You know, I've been in the league now for, for 23 years. And, and it's 23, 23 straight years of this Tuesday night. Um, now we're Thursday, but usually Tuesday night here in here in this gym and uh it's it's just great for the kids to be back here yeah look during you know uh, covid it was such a difficult time for everybody and and, and in the, the catholic league or the catholic schools obviously depends so much on the enrollment and and it's been a struggle uh collectively for all the schools but but you've come out of it in, in a positive way yeah we, and and so many people from the administrators to the faculty to, to the kids to the parents so many people work so hard um to get to get the schools back last year and and we did a, a tremendous job at it and uh now but to be back full normal is there's nothing like it it's it's just great for our kids and our families and and for uh for our administrations of our schools yeah and, and you're having a full season of it right where, where, where we started at football at kind of across the street here at mitchell athletic complex and here for for basketball lacrosse and baseball seasons right around the corner as well so it's it's certainly uh, exciting times. Yeah, we were looking at the calendars. It was funny. We were looking at the calendars and all the overlap last year. There was so much. There was so much overlap of the seasons, and now it is. We're back to normal, normal seasons, and kids can play where they need to play. And and last year, kids are making decisions about where they wanted to play because we had overlapping 
uh, you know, the spring overlapped with the with the winter and the, you know whatever. But um, we were playing football in the spring, for yeah. example. You know, so this is so much better and so much, you know, just great to be back to normal. And the Titans of Holy Trinity, uh, uh, a school close. That's another one of your hats. No, I'll there. change my hat. I'll change my hat. As <laughs> the athletic director, taking on Shaman. I look, it's a great rivalry. It's a natural yes. rivalry, and it's going to be played on a big stage here tonight. Uh, it's, it's always a great game. It's great competition between the two programs. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it, you know, both games this year were tremendous games during the regular season. And, and we'll see. It's going to be hard to beat somebody three times in the season, you know. That's what we're hoping, you know. <laughs> There you go, Chris Harder. Thank you for uh, joining us again. Thanks for here everything you guys do, Don. Appreciate halftime. it. Of course. Uh, we'll take a quick break and we'll get you some halftime stats here as well. About four minutes before the start of the second half, it is a 25 19 lead for St. Mary's in this Long Island Catholic Girls Basketball Championship presented by Beth Page Federal Credit Union. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media has all your Catholic League basketball coverage starting this week. Three attempt, rims out. Oh, the putback! Jackson! Here comes Briscoe. Showtime! On Thursday, it's the Long Island Girls and Boys Championship Games from Hofstra. Friday, New York City Class B and A Boys from Monroe College. On Sunday, City Boys Double A Quarterfinals from Hofstra, plus semifinal and championship games in City Boys Double A. Wednesday, March 9th, and Friday, March 11th. Nobody has you covered more than Varsity Media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch all games free on the Varsity Media Sports Network. a region that lives, feels, and pulses with energy. But before it all, we see you, because it's your lives that breathe life into this island. At Catholic Health, we're able to provide the highest quality, most innovative care for your body, because our culture cherishes your humanity. Long live Long Island. Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for, and our attention to detail on your highlights will separate your resume from others. Stand out from the crowd. We'll help showcase your talents. Contact Varsity Media today and order a college recruiting video. Over the middle, he's got a man. It's complete. See you later. See you later. Going long, wide open. Perazzi, he gets it. Perazzi, foot raise, and five. Make it. Touchdown. Punch, power punch. The trickery. Ryder gets it back. Goes over the top for Haberman. What a catch! Just Ross Simmons strips him, that's loose, and Ross Simmons is going to take this in the other direction. Make it! Touchdown! Touchdown East! You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports.
That horn means we're ready for the start of the second half here of the Long Island Girls Catholic League Basketball Championship. Dylan Butler and Kate Gordon here, the St. John the Baptist head coach. First half, 25-19 in favor of St. Mary's, our leading scorers through the first half for Sacred Heart. It was Kim Hopkins. You can see there number 11 with six points. Four in the first quarter, two in the second. And leading the way for St. Mary's, the Gales, it was Kayla Williams with 11 points in that first half. Taryn Barbeau added eight, and then three each for Alyssa Blaylock and Tara Murray. So Kayla Williams, your leader for the Gales. There you see her in the low post. Terrific first half for Williams. So now that bucket at the end maybe looms even larger because St. Mary's gets the ball coming out. Yeah, that was a big turn of events for them. Um, now they have to play defense and get the ball back uh, and make something happen immediately on offense to get their confidence back up. And doing that right there with a good defensive stop with uh, St. Mary's going inside to Williams right away because she's been so effective. A lot of confidence for this Spartans team as a blocking foul called on Barbo, who flashed out, but kind of continued to flash out into the attacking player. So she's called for her second foul. I actually didn't know if they were going to call it, and I was <laughs> waiting for the whistle. That was a uh, that's a big foul there. Um, and now Sacred Heart gets a new thirty. Sacred Heart, the third seed at eleven and five, beat second seed at Our Lady of Mercy Academy in overtime out at St. Joe's in Patchog on Sunday and St. Mary's with a 10 point win over St. Anthony's. The Gales the top seed at 18 and three. That They're, turnover didn't really help them there. They had a, a new 30. They were able to uh, make something happen. Got away with a little push there I think underneath. And here comes Sacred Heart down. Try to make something happen here. They need to get a score right away to get their confidence up. How about the strength of Annie Kieran in there where Tara Murray just bounced off her in the low post. They're doing a nice job on Keenan, Keenan make it, make Kieran and making her work. Um, and she's not getting a lot of touches. Feek for three. Feek is a uh, prolific scorer. A uh, little side note, her mom was my teammate here at Hofstra University, which is really cool. And she used to knock down threes like that all the time. So <laughs> big shot for Bridget Thiek there. That's going to help them. Clearly in the jeans, Blaylock's three attempt rims around. And we'll see what that does, too, for Thiek's confidence. That was her first three of the game. Well, when she was playing the other night at, against uh, Our Lady of Mercy, she had huge threes, a lot of great passing. She did some great things for Sacred Heart last game. Maybe she can get started here against Mary's. Well, that's an open look for Murray. That's off the mark. And good job just tapping it out there by Marquardt because it looked like Williams was going to have certainly the position and the opportunity for a putback. Big substitution here for St. Mary's as Barbeau comes in um, after not sure if she was going to play today with the injury. Yeah, so that's Taylor Barbeau right there on the ball, number four. Stay on ball, Kimberly. They go low, and that substitution allows a couple of different things. It allows, it as you see, the replay of the high-low. Yeah, it allowed um, Taryn to go low and really create such a dynamic that is very difficult to guard for Sacred Heart when you bring... Um, Taylor back into the game. It also, although she's not out there now, it also allow Alyssa Blaylock to play off the ball, which is really her, her more natural position. It's just nice to see uh, Taylor back after a couple injuries this year, so it's nice to have her on the floor. It's always good to see a kid bounce back like that. So Taryn Barbeau now in double figures with 10. Lead is five for St. Mary's. This little half-court trap is something that uh, they have to handle with bounce passes. They cannot throw the long pass. It will get picked off. Feek again, same spot. Ooh, that was 
the trajectory it looked, looked on. Good. Yeah, from our vantage point, but it was a little bit short. You see it again. It was a good look by Feek and just right. missed. It was right there, but she's a great shooter. She's going to come back and she's going to shoot it again. And she'll continue to play. She's very cerebral as well, very smart. Again, you know, when you come from a basketball family, that's you, you have that brain to make good decisions on the floor. Yeah, Bob Speck said, too, as that ball is tipped away, that obviously, again, he's coached JV for 22 years at Sacred Heart, so he saw a younger Feek and, and said she was huge in the JV championship game a couple years ago in Kellenberg, had like 23 points in that one, and he was able to see what she could do on a big stage. Taryn Barbeau to the basket. No good. Attacking the glass. Loose ball. And that's what you love to see from Sacred Heart. How about the effort by the aforementioned Feek? Yeah, this is her moment right now to maybe, as a senior, kind of bring this in and make some things happen for Sacred Heart. She has the ability. Now she just has to go out there and prove it. Great um, dive on the floor there to tie it up and get the ball back. Bendowski, ooh, some steps as he tried to get the ball out to McGovern for the three, but a little traveling violation. A couple too many steps there, but the idea was good, so they just got to buckle in. Now St. Mary's, again, now they have a, a three um, guard that can make stuff happen and maybe loosen Murray up for an open three. Williams flashes to the foul line and goes to Barbeau. She wants the screen set, switches it, they go to the corner. That's a three by Blaylock off the side of the backboard, and it's Feek. Oh, Bendowski, excuse me, she loses the ball for a moment, but it stays with Sacred Heart as Elwood checks back in. Some good minutes there by the senior Feek. Makes sense to put Elwood back in in this situation to handle the, uh, the secondary pressure. They run stack off the inbound that goes to Elwood. She's had a few big moments in the first half as well. Five points there. As Marys comes the other way, there's Taylor Barbeau, and she's fouled by Bandowski. Again, Barbeau, Ta Taryn, getting her hands on that dribble drive from behind. Her hands are everywhere. You think sometimes she has more than two arms. <laughs> it's just she gets on her hands on everything and is able to create those turnovers and then the quick turnaround there um, for the outlet pass. Inside and fouled was Taryn Barbeau, and she'll go to the line. Foul by Elwood. Now one thing we'll see if this play is a factor, and certainly Bob Speck thought it could, is he uses his bench certainly a lot more than St. Mary's does, right? So on a big court, will that play a factor? I mean, it could, especially because of the pace that St. Mary's plays. But right now, Sacred Heart has to value the basketball to make Mary's have to play a little bit more on the defensive side of the ball. Too many turnovers. He's coming into a pretty critical portion of the game here. Midway through third quarter, the lead is seven. And a jump ball is called possession to St. Mary's. I like the idea of posting her up, Marquette down on the block um, to maybe get a foul call, get something simple going. It's just great defense by uh, Barbeau down there. There's Taylor Barbeau. Only negative for the broadcasters here is we got to say both names. Yes. You can't that, just say Barbeau here. And Williams, the strength inside for the putback and the foul. Great offensive rebound strength again by Williams putting it up in N1. That's the second one of the game. Getting to the free throw line with such strength and excitement. It was nice to see the excitement at the end of the N1. And for a big kid that Williams is, she's got such a sweet stroke from the foul line as well. She's knocked down all four of her free throws here today. She's now got 14 and the lead is 10. Here's Elwood. 
from three off the mark. Battle for the loose ball and will stay here. The foul against St. Mary's. Great hustle by Hopkins on that weak side to get in there on that and not stand and watch. She made something happen, got the ball back. We don't see if they can capitalize on it so the game doesn't get out of control now that it's a 10 point game. Yeah, when it's single digits, you, it, it's a different mentality. When you start to see the double figures, that's when maybe you try to get out of your game a little bit and, and maybe try to do too much. And a push called, and that's another one too where it looked like you're in trouble and a foul called by Kayla Williams. Just playing in a small space here. They got caught in the corner. You can't do that against St. Mary's. Their length is way too efficient and effective. So I think they have to really spread it out a little bit more and attack the gaps and maybe get fouled instead of trying to settle for threes all the time. You see Colleen McGovern backing up a little bit, looking to get the inbounds, gets it up top. Quick swing, nice reversal to Elwood. She drives baseline off glass and in. Great penetration finish off glass. Nice little hesitation move to the rim. Great job. The sophomore's got seven. She's definitely what Spe uh, Sacred Heart needs in the game on the offensive side of the ball. And Clayton with the turnover back into the game for Sacred Heart is Kiernan replacing Marquardt. Here's McGovern. Gets it to Elwood and now Sacred Heart can operate in the half court. Murray out on her. Mayer and they lose it, Murray with the defense. We see what we should do from three, but a great defender as well. She'll try to take the open three. A deep look as well. Off the rim, no good. Will she go again? She dials it up from distance and she buries it. Yeah, we talked about that before, right? You can't give her two in a row. It's like shooting practice. You're going to make the second one every time. That's a shooter's mentality. And that's how Murray plays. That's her second three-pointer. Hopkins lost it on a drive, on an 11-point lead, and Marys has the ball. Big possession in this one. For both teams, on both sides of the ball. Taylor Barbeau, and she's fouled on that drive. Foul on Hopkins as Feek checks back in for Hopkins. It was the fifth foul, which will send Taylor Barbo to the line. Taylor playing with that shoulder injury that she suffered, sat out on the last game or two with that, and now back on the floor. Good to see her, but she's definitely not 100% yet. But it's good to see her back playing and um, and working through the injury, which, you know, he Kevin White definitely has some gritty kids out here fighting the good fight. Yeah, they, he, he's used the word warrior for, for more than a few of his players. Both free throws missed. And Barb Taylor, Barbo, certainly one of them, was, was out for really the better part of three weeks. And when you are missing your true point guard, the pass first floor general, the one you give the keys to, that's a tough player to replace. And again, obviously it switches things up now. It forces Blaylock to be on the ball and then you need someone else to, to play the two. So you alter so many different positions when you lose that floor general. Here yeah. comes Blaylock now. Drives hard. No good, but inside was Taryn Barbo. Blaylock slow to get up. Not sure if she felt she got fouled or she just kind of hit the ground pretty hard. Looks like she's holding her left wrist. But it's always weird when you play, when you're used to the baskets coming out of the top of the ground and then you go in to the top of the ceiling and then you knock into the, um, the holder. It's always a difficult thing with the baskets in different spots when you come from high school ball to this. 14 for Taryn Barbo as Murray was called for the foul. That's the fourth 
against St. Mary's, and the next one will result in a pair of free throws for the Spartans. It's a big possession for Sacred Heart to keep it that 10-point um, lead and not let this get away from them. Elwood up top. Jumper, front rim. Getting her own rebound was Kiernan. She drives, goes off the backboard for two. Maybe that's what Kiernan needed to kind of get going here. She's had a slow start. But there's Murray. The that's a big answer from Murray. Once she starts feeling it, that's a uh, it's that's trouble. The capital T right there. Certainly is. Taylor <laughs> Clayton with the defensive intensity results in a turnover. 40 seconds left and a close game has opened up for St. Mary's. A 14-point lead with the ball in the final 40 seconds of this quarter. Oh, what a move on the baseline and Barbeau unable to finish, but she'll go to the line for two. Mayer really stepped up there, tried to go ver vertical um, and block the shot, but Barbeau just too strong, too aggressive, too athletic, got to the rim and a nice move along the baseline. First is good. And you know the reason that she has those pair of 40-point games and 22 and the semifinals is because she does what we just saw her do. She makes her free throws. She's been automatic from the foul line tonight. Eight for eight from make, the line. Makes you so hard to guard because if you foul her, you're going to lose the points anyway and you get into foul trouble. So that's a huge um, asset to have when you're getting recruited by schools to be able to do all of that and be effective from the foul line as well. Shaylin Woodson applying some pressure there. She's a freshman, number five. You can kind of feel that St. Mary's and Coach White thinks he can put the stamp on this with this pressure that he's putting on them right now, this man-to-man -man pressure that we haven't seen really all game. It's almost like he can feel that this is going to put an end to it. Elwood inside trying to get it to Mayer, and a foul was called on the floor, but again, both teams in the bonus, which means that Mayer, the six-foot senior Lehigh lacrosse commit, will go to the line for two. Mayer, a tenacious rebounder, hard worker, another one of those who comes to the gym early, and Speck also coaches soccer, so in the fall sees sees Mayer running track as well, so she's always out there, three-sport athlete for the Spartans. Yeah, she does the dirty work for them. She's always been a great rebounder. She's always in the spots to make her team better, always looking for the open player. She goes one of two. Now the Gales can hold for the last of this third quarter with a 42-27 lead. They better know where Murray is off this dribble drive, I'll tell you that right now. Barbeau behind the back to her left, five seconds. Barbeau drives, the runner! Back rim, no good, rebound ripped down by McGovern, but there's no shot to be had there for Sacred Heart. A huge third quarter by St. Mary's, who opens up a 42 to 27 lead. You're watching this Long Island Girls CHSA Basketball Championship on the Varsity Media Sports Network, presented by Beth Page Federal Credit Union. Time to dance. Catholic Health, when we see our island, we see a region that lives, feels, and pulses with energy. But before it all, we see you, because it's your lives that breathe life into this island. At Catholic Health, we're able to provide the highest quality, most innovative care for your body because our culture cherishes your humanity. Long live Long Island. Oh yeah, let's 
Let's dance a little bit here. Let's go, Barbos. I love that when the little kids are in the bleachers and they're <laughs> cheering for their family. My little guys, Jaden and Riley, they come to every game. They know all these kids' <laughs> names. They're always yelling, shoot the ball, rebound the ball. I love it when the little kids are there watching the game. Well, she certainly loved that third quarter as a St. <laughs> Mary supporter. 17-8 that third quarter, and that's the difference right now. It was a tight game through the first two quarters, but now St. Mary's has opened up a 42-27 lead going into the final eight minutes of regulation. And I think, you know, the difference, like you said before, you bring in Taylor Barbo, it changes the dynamic. It allows her sister to go underneath, and, and they're, now you're guarding... It, it's so much more difficult to guard when you have that. So now, back out. They're in this trapping 2-3 zone. They got to get someone to the high post, and they got to knock down jump shots. That's it. That one Sounds off. so easy. <laughs> 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 that one off the mark. But we'll stay with Sacred Heart. Up top to Bendowski. They just jump every pass, and it puts Sacred Heart out of sync on offense. That's a great timeout by Kevin White because Shaylin Woodson off the steal certainly looked like she was a little bit out of control. 30-second timeout for St. Mary's and the Gales. 18-3 and three on the year. Key wins for... Kevin White's squad this year, Nazareth at St. Rose, big win there at the St. Rose at the Rose Classic, I should say, beat St. Francis Prep, Malloy, McClancy. The losses this year to Sparta, New Jersey, to Springfield, Mass, and to a very, very good Staten Island Academy team. So uh, that was the one where he said, "Look, they were the better team. They were great. They played really well. This one should be a great one as well." Coming up next here, it's Holy Trinity, Shamanad, and the boys. Catholic Championship presented by Beth Page Federal Credit Union. So it's been a great year for St. Mary's. It'll be a great year on the lacrosse field as well. Our live lacrosse preview show coming up from 317 Main in Farmingdale, March 8th, 7:30. Come on down, get something to eat, something to drink, watch it live in person or right here on the Varsity Media YouTube channel. They feed it inside. Williams loses it, though. And look at Murray just coming in. Yes, she was called for the foul, but she was close to getting a jump ball there just by coming in, realizing that Williams lost it. Yeah, and I haven't really seen that from Murray all year. It seems to be she's being way more aggressive today, trying to make other things happen, not just shoot the three, and it's been really effective. St. Mary's, you go back to 2020 and 2015. Their last two Catholic championships, three-point attempt off the mark, and a foul called on the floor. Certainly some terrific players, right? Back for those teams, you, you remember, of course, Maylin Bat Bat Batista went to GW, now a grad assistant at St. John's, where she coaches, or one of the coaches for uh, Kadesha Bailey, who, yes, again, who also. at St. Mary's stand yes. out as well. Yeah, they have a storied program. They've had a lot of great players come out of St. Mary's. Um, and, you know, it's nice to see the program continue to grow. And, and they do a nice job there. Yeah, it was Tom Flynn leading the way. And now Kevin White as well. And three-point shot by Murray off the mark. And Kevin said in, in 2020, when they last won the league championship, that's a three-point attempt off the mark. Crashing in for the rebounds was Marquardt turning on the baseline, that jumper off the mark as well. Sacred Heart's gone cold at really the worst possible time, but Kevin was saying back to that story, they win this championship now, of course, to go on to the state championship, and it was a dream matchup because he was going to face his daughter, Kerry, and St. Francis Prep, uh, so a lot of bragging rights in the, ho in the White household, but uh, that game and, and the rest of the season, sadly, canceled because of the COVID global pandemic. It's always fun when there's family stuff involved. You know, there's a lot of competition. 
Um, and I know Prep and Mary's, that was something that he was looking forward to. And it's also a, f it's a good rivalry as well because when you look at where Mary's is and uh, what a move there by Blaylock and, and Williams from her hip nearly putting that back in. That's a lot of the same demographic that you're looking at, right, in terms of a player pool, that, yes. that same area that St. Francis Prep and St. Mary's recruits. Williams is just unconscious from the free throw line. Confident, gets up there. She's like, all right, let me get another one of these, please. And she just puts it up, and that's it for her. She's playing great down there for uh, St. Mary's today. And really collectively, too, for St. Mary's, they've... I'm looking at my book. Uh, they've not missed, uh, I'm sorry, they've missed two free throws by Taylor Barbo in the third quarter. They've not missed another one. They've been fantastic. Ahead of the field is Taylor Barbo, and you can certainly see or sense from that third quarter, that 17-8 third quarter for St. Mary's, it has continued, and that lead, which was a slim one at halftime, has ballooned to 19 here in the fourth quarter. And it all stems from St. Mary's defense. The two guards up top, the pressure they put on the ball handlers, and then you think you have a, a fast break and Blaylock comes from behind, gives the tap. But I like the patience of St. Uh, Sacred Heart there to try to get the ball inside. But the guards up top of St. Mary's is just bringing a lot of pressure. Alyssa Blaylock also, by the way, missed a couple of free throws earlier. So I've, it's not been perfect, but it's been very, very good collectively, especially Taryn Barbo and, and Kayla Williams from the foul line. And if you look at that, they really haven't scored a lot of baskets. So they have, that's really something that you can try to control going forward. Marquardt knocks down her second. 46-28 the lead. A little bit of a matchup zone here. Trying to maybe get them to turn the ball over and not get in front of them on that downhill. But Blaylock's just great move, just can't finish. Elwood goes the other way. It's one on two, though. Look at a speed by Elwood to great get to the basket. Great step through. The twin step through. That was a nice little move. <laughs> Elwood does a lot of nice things here for Sacred Heart. Now here's the interesting dynamic, right? With five minutes left, St. Mary's is a team that likes to get up and run and in transition. Will they look to be a little bit more patient offensively? As that three attempt, no good. Williams, the put back. She's playing so solid today. Every ball, it's a great look. She's making great decisions with the ball. And a foul there and in the sport of soccer, you call that one a professional foul because <laughs> Barbeau is getting to the basket for two, and there's that defensive intensity you mentioned there. Taylor Barbeau presenting it there before she was fouled. Yeah, and it's always tough with that because, you know, on the college level, they go back, they look at that as a flagrant, it's obstruction. So, you know, just because you can't have to go for the ball, but it's so difficult. I don't know, you mentioned before, if they can slow down. I don't know if it's in their <laughs> blood to slow yeah. down. This team is on 100 miles an hour all day long, and that's what they're going to continue to do. So if they can continue to speed up Sacred Heart and make mistakes, that's how it's going to happen. It's a full timeout by St. Mary's, and we'll take it with them as well. 4.38 left here, fourth quarter. You're watching the Long Island Girls Catholic Basketball Championship presented by Bethpage Federal Credit Union on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Welcome back to the MAC Sports Complex. Some St. Mary's fans in the stands, and that's exactly what Chris Hardett was talking about at halftime, how great it is to, to have fans in the stands. We took it for granted before the year 2020, and, and now it is special every time out. 
Dylan Butler, Kate Gordon here with you. It's the final 429 here. Good pressure defensively by Sacred Heart. Foul called on the floor, though. I think Murray got away with a little forearm push there and then created space to get the entry pass. So interesting, and then the foul call underneath. Alyssa Blaylock to inbounds, finds Taryn Barbeau. Back outside, rimmed out by Blaylock. 18 point lead for St. Mary's, final 410. You have to go back to 2006 since Sacred Heart has won a uh, state uh, Catholic championship. Inside move by Kiernan. She took a glance at the scoreboard after that, hoping that there's a little more time left for them to kind of get back into this game. Hoping that the time is not the time is their enemy right now, unfortunately. 1997 for the last league championship for Sacred Heart. There's Blaylock trying to find some Room to maneuver, no good. And listen, if the time is now for Sacred Heart. Here is Theek. Marquardt's done a nice job on the defensive glass the last few possessions. Wow, that, that was, was deep. that was very deep. So Elwood back in, Theek out, Taylor Barbo in again for St. Mary's. She'll come in for Blaylock. And that's now the luxury you have, right, where maybe before you had to play Blaylock. And, and now you, you can rest her, you can sit her, you can, you can bring her in. Obviously, we mentioned that hamstring injury where, that she played through. She didn't leave. Uh, she, she willed herself and her team to that win against St. Anthony's in the semifinals. Yeah, and you could tell she was laboring all day with that um, injury. Um, she wasn't really herself, but still the speed, even her at 60% speed, moves a heck of a lot faster than most of the people in this place. <laughs> this is true. So she, she still did some great things defensively today, but you could see it definitely struggled a little bit offensively with that, with not enough bounce. Shot clock violation on St. Mary's, and you kind of think they'll take it at this point with 2.49 left in this fourth quarter. And like we said, that short bench, and they're still pressing and pressing nonstop, trying to make things happen. Great cross-court pass there. And there's Elwood again. This time she misses the layup attempt. Loose ball. It's Elwood getting a great hustle by McGovern. Elwood switches to her left. Kate, I think you said it before, but I... You really like the future of Haley Elwood, right? Yeah, I think she's going to be really, really solid basketball player in this league. She does some really nice things. She understands the game. She goes left and right very comfortably, and she can shoot the three. Smart player for a sophomore. She does some really nice things. And we're seeing what we didn't think we would see which is St. Mary's taking the air out of the ball. Murray loses it with one second on the shot clock. The other way, layup and the foul! Colleen McGovern! And that's why St. Mary's does not hit, go slow, right? They dribble the air, dribble the air, and then they turn it over and end one on the other end because that's just not who they are. McGovern. An all-around great player. Knocks down the free throw as well to complete the three-point play. And 48-35, the lead with a minute 50 left. If you're looking ahead, it's three team fouls for both. Not that you necessarily want to start fouling a St. Mary's team that's been so, so good from the foul line. Taryn Barbo. Oh, what a move. Good job, good job. The only thing stopping her there was her own head coach, <laughs> Kevin White, calling the timeout. He's seen enough, I guess. 
He didn't like the way things were developing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a full. We'll take it with him as well. 130 left in this fourth quarter. It's 48-35, the lead for St. Mary's. You're watching this Long Island Girls Catholic Basketball Championship presented by Beth Page Federal Credit Union on the Varsity Media Sports Network. Parents and athletes, why leave your college career in the hands of amateurs? Varsity Media produces professional college recruiting videos that you can use to help land a spot on the team. Our highlight reels have proven to save thousands of dollars in college tuition. You've worked hard and put the effort into your high school athletic career. Don't take any chances when it comes to your future. Varsity Media has been producing college recruiting videos since 2010. We understand what college coaches are looking for, and our attention to detail on your highlights will separate your resume from others. Welcome back. Some more St. Mary's fans in the stands. Enjoying what they're seeing with the Gales leading 48-35, make it 50. What a bucket underneath by Taryn Barbo. That little isolation, she just bullies herself along the baseline and powers up. It's fantastic athleticism by Barbo. Bendowski. They'll go inside. Jump ball, and Kendra Daly getting a, a big ovation from her bench, number 12 for Sacred Heart. Another lacrosse commit going to Lafayette. She draws the jump ball, and a timeout also called by St. Mary's. We'll keep it here this time, though, as we head to the huddles, and Bob Speck, the head coach, having a conversation off of that decision there, the jump ball decision, and Speck, uh, again, 22 years JV head coach. First year as the varsity head coach was FDNY for 32 years. Went in as a young, young man and retired on his 53rd birthday, March 7, 2010. Congratulations to Bob for certainly his service with the FDNY and uh, he joked, listen, he, he said it's my first year in, in the varsity level, and he said it's it's uh, night and day from the JV level. He said some nights you're 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 tossing and turning, you're you're going over plays in, in your head, you're you're waking up trying to find a piece of paper to write them on. He said there is no no gimmies in the uh, in, in the Catholic League. That is true. I'm still going over the my last <laughs> game and I've been done for a little bit now. So it is. And he's a great man. We've had a lot of conversation, and I do thank him for all he's done for uh, New York as a fireman. And, um, you know, he's a fantastic guy. He brought a lot of energy to these kids this year, and they, they seem to have bought in, obviously. Yeah, future bright. Future is bright for Sacred Heart. That's for sure. Final 40 seconds of this one. We go inside as both teams uh, give some bench personnel opportunities. That was Chloe Nieves inside the 5'10 freshman. Bendowski hands off to Daly. Daly over the head of Elwood, who can't track that one down. So with 20 seconds left, St. Mary's can, if they certainly choose, let this clock wind down and celebrate another Catholic championship. Again, they won in 2020. They won in 2015. And before that, you had to go back to 1994, 93, 92, and 90. But it'll be St. Mary's, the 2022 Catholic Basketball Champions. The Gales win this one 50 to 35. It was a great win. Hard fought on both sides. I thought that um, Sacred Heart gave them everything they had. It was just too much pressure from St. Mary's defense uh, today for them. So the Gales win the league championship and will be the Long Island representative in the Class AA championship as the both teams line up for the post-game handshake. And uh, look, certainly St. Mary's, when you consider the season, they're now 19-3. and They were the top seed. They play an unbelievable non-conference schedule. 
uh, a well-deserved championship for St. Mary's. Absolutely. And, you know, they get to go on now and see what they can um, do in the, the next level, um, which they haven't had the opportunity to do because of, like, what we spoke about with COVID and then last year. Um, so, you know, now is their opportunity, which is, is great for them. And now Sacred Heart has to regroup and try to go out and do it again and, uh, and play Our Lady of Mercy and, and try to beat them. Again, being uh, the underdog. Uh, yes, again, and Our Lady of Mercy now with a little bit more uh, uh, something to play for. Well, right? yeah, so that should be a lot be, of fun. Very personal, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> the two all-girls schools ready to take it on to be the A rep will be quite the uh, battle at the end, I believe. So we're going to do uh, a, a, a post-game. All right, we have They both had 18, I think. Just Williams and, and Barbo. So the runners up plaque being presented to Sacred Heart now. And uh, again, I think, and they're already realizing it, Kate, just, you know, as the three seed, 11 and five. Uh, maybe not a lot of people outside of their program thought they'd be in this game, right? So uh, it is a mission accomplished in, in a way for Sacred Heart. Absolutely. And, you know, this is this is something that they should be very proud of, They're, what they brought to the table this year. And they, they have a young squad that can really do some great things. So now St. Mary's will get their championship Black. And there you see the captains of St. Mary's as the entire roster will now also get their own personal mementos from this championship as well. And perhaps serendipitously, when they announced the individual winners, the low numbers are already there, so they could just grab them and go. It's like a two-for-one special. Yeah, you know, right. buy one, get one free. So, you know, and, and these kids deserve it. They, they, they played hard. They work hard. Um, they battled some injuries. I know they had a lot of, uh, they didn't get a lot of games in at the beginning of the year because of COVID and stuff. So it's nice to see them bounce back and have such success. So St. Mary's. You can see the procession continuing, ending with Chloe Nieves, number 55. We'll have a team photo as well for the victorious Gales of St. Mary's. We'll take a quick break, and we'll endeavor to get our post-game interview as well with our player of the game. Certainly the MVP trophy is going to be, have to uh, be handed out here as well. Actually, we'll keep it right here as they're going to give out, I believe, the MVP. P now. So Taryn Barbeau player announced the as the player of the year. And Kate, certainly speaking to some of your fellow coaches, this was the vote. And, and it was certainly no surprise that she uh, captured the player of the year award. Not at all. I mean, very difficult to guard. Just does all the little things. Makes the players around her better. And Blaylock named the MVP of the game. I mean, defensively, she made created so many turnovers for Sacred Heart, so I can see why um, that's something that you would, you know, honor and, and express a real happiness for because of her ability to turn people over. She's just everywhere defensively. So now we'll take the quick break as they'll take that team picture under the basket and we'll get our player of uh, the game as well. When we return, as you're watching this Long Island Girls Catholic Basketball Championship presented by Beth Page Federal Credit Union on the Varsity Media Sports Network.
When we see our island, we see a region that lives, feels, and pulses with energy. But before it all, we see you, because it's your lives that breathe life into this island. At Catholic Health, we're able to provide the highest quality, most innovative care for your body because our culture cherishes your humanity. Long live Long Island. You're watching the Varsity Media Sports Network, the home for New York high school sports. Varsity Media has all your Catholic League basketball coverage starting this week. Three attempt, rims out. Oh, the putback! Jackson! Here comes Briscoe. Showtime! On Thursday, it's the Long Island Girls and Boys Championship Games from Hofstra. Friday, New York City Class B and A Boys from Monroe College. On Sunday, City Boys Double A Quarterfinals from Hofstra, plus semifinal and championship games in City Boys Double A. Wednesday, March 9th, and Friday, March 11th. Nobody has you covered more than Varsity Media. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and watch all games free on the Varsity Media Sports Network. see our island, we see a region that lives, feels, and pulses with energy. But before it all, we see you, because it's your lives that breathe life into this island. At Catholic Health, we're able to provide the highest quality, most innovative care for your body, because our culture cherishes your humanity. Long live Long Island. Parents and athletes. Welcome back to Hofstra University, where St. Mary's, the 2022 Long Island Girls Basketball Championship winning team, defeating Sacred Heart 50-35. to We have our Varsity Media Player of the Game with us now. It's Taryn Barbeau. And uh, Taryn, not only are you the Varsity Media Player of the Game, you're the Player of the Year in the league. You, you've got a lot of trophies uh, with you right now. First of all, congratulations uh, on the win. And, thank you, and thank uh, you. How special does does this feel i mean it's hard to kind of do it as the favorite uh but but you guys certainly did that you know uh, you know tough battles in the semifinals and the finals um basically so you just wanted to get back a win for the, for this year i mean from last year because we lost in the chip last year so we want to get another win like we did freshman year and this year certainly you know i mean as, as expected uh huge game from you 18 um Kayla Williams had a big game as well. And the two of you as well, you made your free throws. It's, it sounds simple, but in a game like this, those points are, are, are huge, and, and you both were, were lights out from the foul line. What, what, just, I mean, on a big stage like that, I, I guess you weren't maybe feeling the, the pressure? Yeah, we, we practice free throws, free throws, in practice every day. We both stay after, after practice to practice some free throws and do extra. Okay, so now here's the question. <laughs> Freshman year, coming off the bench cold <laughs> against me, and you drill that jumper. How special today is as exciting as that was as a freshman? I want to get another win on this court, <laughs> and yeah, just to secure, secure another championship. Well, obviously, maybe you should be playing here because this is where you play great, and I think you're fantastic. I, I was really impressed by you today, and, and you do it with such poise and confidence, and, and that's awesome. So congratulations on Player of the Year. This is a tough league, and you did a great job this year. Thank you, thank you. How about you having Taylor out there for the second half of this game? You know, uh, speaking to Coach Wyatt, he said it was touch and go. We weren't sure if he was, she was going to be able to play, and uh, to see her come out in the second half, she seemed like that you know, gave you guys collectively a spark. Yeah, she gives us um, momentum on defense and offense as she pushes the ball good. And how about now? This season continues as you look for a state championship. How exciting is that? I'm very excited. 
Right. I hope you guys bring it home. Good. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you. Taryn Barbeau, the Varsity Media Player of the Game. Congratulations on the win, and we wish you the best of luck in the state tournament as Thank well. You. All right, so that's Taryn Barbeau, and a big win for St. Mary's, 50-35 to 35 over Sacred Heart in the Girls Catholic Basketball Championship. That'll do it here for this one. We want to remind you as well, the boys championship game coming up in about 18 minutes or so as Holy Trinity and Chaminade will do battle in that one. For my broadcast partner, Kate Gordon, want to thank our camera guys, Angelo Caezo and Ron Pierre as well. Our director, Chris Sweeney, executive producer, Ben Turchin. I'm Dylan Butler thanking you for joining us on the Varsity Media Sports Network for this Catholic Basketball Championship game presented by Beth Page Federal Credit Union.